Hello, it is Sunday, January 15th, 2012 at 2.03 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm on the College of DuPage Next Generation Weather Lab site. I want to show you some really strange clouds that we have moving through the Great Falls area. You can see it right here. It's just kind of a, a big puddle. And then we'll also we've got some flashes here coming out of Billings, Montana. And the loop we're looking at goes from 503 to 746 GMT on January 15th, 2012. And we have some other odd things going, but let me show you what they look like here in the next rad site. Oh, not the deck rad, the, lo the loops. We're going to look at the loops here. You can see we've got little beams coming out this way. Now right over here we have, um, let's see, this would be Missoula. Well, no, we're looking at Missoula, so that would be Great Falls, where this little divot is. There's a uh, Doppler radar right there. And see these little like rib-shaped things coming down here? Let me slow it down. Let's zoom in too, because it get full effect. See, we got a right there. We got beams going right over to and right below the Great Falls area, and then we got these little rib things going, coming down. They're kind of like miniature snake clouds or something. I don't know, but it looks also like there might be some kind of a signal, a signal or frequency coming down in through here. Let's zoom it back out. What's interesting about this is when I went and looked at the um, precipitation, because this looks like it should be a big storm, because you know we're kind of up here and the, you know, from greens to yellows and up into the reds. And I went and looked at the precipitation in an hour, and the whole area is a tenth of an inch or less. And then storm total, which I don't know what that means. I guess the whole time it's running through, we still have the same thing a tenth of an inch or less. And this loop is about, <coughs> oh, maybe from four to eight, right, well, let's go look at it. That way we don't have any misunderstandings here. So it's going from 401 to 755 UTC. So that's basically four hours. So when we go and look at I was trying a new method and got myself messed up. Let's do Great Falls here. And another interesting thing is these Doppler radars are sent on the clear mode, the CL. And they're supposed to change over to precipitation mode when there's precipitation. So I'm going to say that this is not precipitation, that we're not getting any rain up in that area that rather this is frequencies that we're reading. Actually look at this one. Look at how this is a cone shape. It comes backwards. And it's way up in the, the purples and the whites, way up here at the top. So that means it's really dense. Whatever it is, is really dense there. And then I want to go look at, well let's look at the precipitation of that also. And again we're getting Ten, oh, this is 0 0.05, so 0 0.05 of an inch. And here we've got a little bit more right here and here and here. Three little areas. Storm total, about the same. And then let's go down and look at um, Billings, Montana. And this is where it gets really interesting because we've got this dancing, these dancing beams coming out, and they're being directed at the other storms that are passing over. Well, storms, the frequencies. I'm going to call them frequencies because there is no rain <laughs> accumulating. What's interesting is we've got everything's lit up here. I mean, see how it's all dancing? It's it's very agitated. High frequency is is what I'm thinking. And always I've found that these are wind farms, you know, in, in um, 
like Dodge City, Kansas, you'll have a wind farm and a wind farm, and they get all lit up when there's <laughs> beams coming out. Is so what I'm thinking is that these, the Doppler is somehow getting energy from these wind farms and using them to send signals out to those frequency clouds that are passing over. But I went over to Google Earth and I could find no wind farms. Like I looked right in this area here. I found a um, high power line right here, but I, I couldn't find anything here. And there's always something there that, you know, either an electrical, electrical something or pretty much it's always been wind farms. And I didn't go, I didn't look for in these areas, but because if they're trying to hide them, which is what I found, and I did a video on them in Iowa, they were hiding the wind farm. Um, they actually took images on Google Earth and made it so you couldn't see them. But let's go back and look at, um, well, let's check the precipitation on this too. Nothing. So, well, there's no, it's just those things all lit up. I was thinking I'd see something, so I'm stunned here momentarily. Um, let's go back and look at the... Our flash isn't showing. There it is. Let's wait till it comes around again. Right there. So... The beams are, look like they're mostly concentrated, see here, in this area. Although there's a pretty good concentration going down this way too. And there's some, well there's, this one's going up this way, but that cloud's going over. Here we have some more lit up areas right here. So, I see it's in stripes. I mean clouds don't come in stripes. I mean, they, they do, well, <laughs> not normally, just when they go over mountains or whatever and they've got some something to make them start acting like a wave. So, anyway, well, then I found this article. <laughs> Let's go a little further. $320 million loan seeds, Montana Rim Rock Wind Farm. And this is for, I guess it's going to be up like a couple counties up in this area here. But what what really got my attention was that they didn't think they were going to get it. Somehow we've got, where is it? The Department of Energy was going to loan them or is going to loan them like $15 million <laughs> or something like that. Let's see if I can find it. And then also the people that are building the wind farm are from Spain. I looked at another article and the people were from Ireland. We're, I mean, we're not even building these ourselves in the United States. I mean, somebody else is getting all the profits. It's crazy. I'm still looking for where it said how much. I might have to do this again because <laughs> I'm wasting too much time finding it. Oh, it's because I'm on page two. Well, that'll do it. I should just read the whole, I would have had time to read the whole article. And I don't remember numbers very well, so i got to go look. Here it is. In August, Tunbridge set, sold the transmission project to Cal Calgary-based Enbridge, which also, which also assumed the $161 million loan Tunbridge had received from the U.S. Department of Energy's Western Area Power Administration. So, I mean, I don't understand how the Department of Energy has enough money to be loaning money. I mean, they obviously have way too much money then. Um, well, I guess it is the Department of Energy, but well, we're loaning the money to, to people outside of the country. I don't know, I'm just starting to get clear pictures. This is just not a pretty picture. And so, um, well, I'll just have to pray about it. And I, I, I hope others would start praying about this too. I mean, we're putting these wind farms everywhere and it's killing all the bees. They, they can't find their way home and the whole hive dies. 
And so we got all this money we're going to have, but if we don't have any food, <laughs> you know, or, you know, go have to go out and hand pollinate crops. I mean, what's that? Craziness. So anyway, have a good rest of the night. I'm sorry about rolling on here. Um, God bless you all. May he watch over you and keep you.